Hello and welcome to a, another video from the events calendar. My name is James and in this video we're going to talk about several different ways of customizing your calendar page uh, on your WordPress website when using the events calendar plugin. So some of the methods require a little bit of coding knowledge and some of the methods require no coding knowledge. And we're going to go over all of those different methods. So no matter where you are on the coding spectrum, you should be able to find some way to customize your calendar. So let's take a look. Okay, so for the purposes of this video, we have a fresh WordPress install here um, and we just have the free events calendar plugin installed and we've gone ahead and put in some uh, events that we can look at um, on the calendar. So the first method that we're going to talk about for customizing your calendar is through the WordPress customizer. So first thing I'm going to do is hop on over to our calendar. Okay, and you can see we have a calendar here and it looks pretty good. But, you know, perhaps your WordPress theme um, uses certain colors that don't look good with this blue button here, for instance, or the white background on this calendar. There are some basic styling options that we have. If we hop over to this customizer tab right here and we come down to the events calendar section. So there's some global elements and there's also specifically the events bar that we can customize month view, which is what we're looking at right now and single event view. So since we're looking at the month view, I'm going to hop on over to the month view tab. And just to give you an example here, let's say we change this to red. Now you'll notice these little words here, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, they're all red. Maybe that looks better with your theme. The date marker will make that purple. Now you can see that these numbers here inside each date just turn purple. So these are some really easy, basic ways that you can customize the way your calendar looks without having to know any code. You don't have to use any custom CSS or anything like that. And if we go back to our global elements, you'll see that we can even adjust the font size and some of the colors. And so this is just a really, really cool, easy way to quickly customize your calendar and hopefully help to make it match your website theme a little bit better than maybe it does right out of the box. Another way that we can customize our calendar without having to play around with any pesky code is to go into our event settings. So I'm going to back out of this page and go into our event settings. And we're going to want to go to the display tab. And right here at the top, there's a couple things that we want to take a quick look at. So first of all, this is the default style sheet used for events templates. Now there's two options here. There's tribe event styles. That's our attempt at making a really nice looking calendar. And then there's skeleton styles where basically there's almost no extra CSS involved. So pretty much whatever your theme is doing is going to override the way the calendar looks. And so you've already seen what the tribe event style calendar looks like. So let's go ahead and choose skeleton styles and then go look at our calendar and see how that looks. Okay, so to be honest, it doesn't really look that good, uh, but that's kind of to be expected, uh, honestly. So uh, basically what this is doing is just sort of looking at your theme CSS to determine things like button colors and font size and things like that. So your results will definitely vary when it comes to choosing this setting. There's going to be times where, depending on your theme, choosing that option will actually make the calendar look better. It'll match your theme better. Um, there's other times where you just want to leave it at the default and use, um, use our styling. I think if you are planning on really customizing your calendar using custom CSS, you probably want to choose the skeleton style CSS. So there's as little CSS to start with as possible. And then you can start adding your own CSS on top of that to really make it look exactly how you want. Um, but I just wanted to make sure that you saw that setting was in there. It doesn't hurt to just try it and see what the calendar looks like and see which of those two options looks better for you. Probably the default will look better, but like I said, you, know, you just never know. The other option is the events template. Now these templates are actually coming from your themes page templates. So um, when a theme developer makes a theme, they have the option to create different page templates that you can use. So when you're creating a page, all of your pages don't have to have the exact same layout. If you don't know what I mean, let's hop on over to a new page. And you'll notice over here is this template option. And inside we have cover template and full width template. That's two templates that the developers of this theme created so that when I create a page, I can choose to use the cover template, which will look one way, or the full width template, which will look another way. And you can make as many page templates as you want as a theme developer. And if you're comfortable with code, you can actually go in, create a child theme, and then make your own page templates. And the reason I'm telling you this is because um, this is a very fairly common thing to create different templates for your pages. 
And when you do that, you can actually use those for your calendar page as well. So I'm going to go back to our event settings and you'll see that there's our template that we choose. Uh, there's the default page template, which is likely going to be one of these two. And then there's the two templates that the theme developer created. So I'm going to choose cover template just to see what that looks like. We'll refresh our page here. Okay, so we have this big sort of header section. And then our calendar is in mobile view because this page template has a very narrow content width there. So our calendar is forced to enter mobile view there. Um, so I probably wouldn't choose this template to use for my calendar. Uh, but I just wanted to show you that you can you can choose those different page templates and choose the one you like best from the options that are there. And if you're comfortable with code, you can actually go in and create your own template and then use that to display your events calendar. So I'm going to go ahead and go back to settings and put it back to our default events template and save that. Okay, go ahead and refresh that. And we're back to our regular calendar with the skeleton styles. I'm actually going to go ahead and put those back to the tribe event styles as well. Okay, here we are. So the next thing I want to talk about is customizing your calendar using custom CSS. So if you are pretty comfortable with using CSS, it's pretty easy to add your own custom CSS to a WordPress website. I'm going to say, you know, let's just say that for whatever reason, we don't want this to show up. We want subscribe to calendar option to not be there. We do not want our users doing that. Uh, what I'm going to do is first, I'm going to start by inspecting the element that I want to modify. And then I'm going to make sure I get exactly the right element. And let's say we can probably just go ahead and get rid of this whole div right here. Subscribe drop down container. Now, if I come over here, I'm going to move my customizer up here, click this plus sign. Now I'm editing that particular element and I'm just going to say display none. And sometimes you have to put a little important in there for it to work. Now you can see it's gone. So this is of course temporary. This is just me messing around within the browser's inspect tool. But now what I can do is I can just copy this right here with the control C and I'll open up my customizer. And right down here is an additional CSS section. I'm just going to paste that code right in there and click publish. Now refresh the page just to make sure that my inspect tool shenanigans goes away and scroll down and we can see that that subscribe counter option is gone because we put that custom code in the customizer. So it's just a really easy way to customize things. Um, you know, I already showed you that you can change things like font color and stuff with the customizer without using any code, but you could do anything you want in here. You could change the color of these numbers. Uh, you could change the font family that's used on this page here with some custom CSS, um, all sorts of different things. And um, it's really easy to drop in the customizer. That way you don't have to worry about, um, you know, if your theme updates and then you lose the changes you made, that doesn't happen when you use the customized tool. Those, those changes persist throughout uh, theme updates. Whereas sometimes people will actually edit the style.css file of the theme which works until your theme updates and all those changes go away. So uh, much better to just go ahead and use that customizer tool for that kind of thing. The next thing I want to talk to you about is something called hooks. Now hooks are a WordPress uh, feature that allow you to basically modify parts of code. You can modify parts of code in the actual WordPress core files. You can modify code in your theme. You can modify code in the plugins. Anywhere where the developer specifically puts a hook, you can use that hook to modify some code. And there's two kinds of hooks. There's action hooks, which basically just allow you to run a custom function at some point. And then there's filter hooks, which allow you to modify existing code. So basically what happens is when a developer is developing a theme, for instance, there's a there might be a certain part of the theme where they know other people may want to sort of modify this one bit. And so they will include a filter hook in that code so that future developers can easily hook into that and filter or modify that bit of code. And then action hooks allow you to do something similar, but instead of modifying existing code, action hooks are mostly used to just run a custom function. You can write up a function that does a thing and that function will run 
at a certain time uh, whenever that hook is is run by the uh, by the server. So I'm going to kind of show you what that means. That's probably not the best way to explain it all. Um, but I'm going to show you a very simple and very common example of a couple action hooks. So if we look at the code of a website, I'm actually going to go to the view page source and just view all the code. You'll notice right here is a head tag. And then if we scroll down somewhere right here is the closing head tag. Now all this code, I want you to see just how many lines of code there are. Okay, so it starts at line five, goes to line 114. So there's about a, a little over 100 lines of code inside the head, right? Now, if we go back to our theme, we go to appearance themes, you can see we're using 2020. So I'm gonna to go to the file editor and we're gonna take a look at the header.php file right here. And you'll see where it says head. And then here's the closing head tag. Now that, that looks weird, right? There's only about 10 lines of code here when we just saw over a hundred lines of code. Okay, but then you'll notice this little guy right here, WP head. All right, this is a little, a little function that you can use to basically hook into this function and do whatever you want. Um, and whenever this WP head function is called, any other code that's hooked into that function will run. And that's where all that other code came from is, you know, theme developer, plugin developer, WordPress itself writes code that hooks into these functions. So if we do a search for WP head, you'll see right here in that function, this is the hook. This is called an action hook. So do action and then in parentheses WP underscore head. What this allows you as a developer to do is write a function called add action WP head, and then you can write your custom function. And what happens is anytime this function right here is run, your code will run alongside it and any other code that anybody else writes that hooks into this action hook. Okay, so that's where all this code is coming from right inside here. Uh, it's somebody, most of this I believe is coming from the theme, uh, wrote some code and said, hey, when the WP head action hook runs, I also want to run this code. And so that's where you get all these lines of code, even though our header.php file only had just a few lines. All that code is coming from this one little line right here. So if we hop on over to our functions.php file, I can actually show you this action hook in action. So I'm just going to scroll down to the very bottom here, and I'm going to type add action. So the hook that the developer left for us to use is a do action. And now we're going to use that hook by typing add action. We're gonna say WP head, because that's the name of the hook that we want to use. Comma, and then I'm just gonna name my function whatever I want. Some random function, All right? And then we need to actually write that function. So function, some random function. I'm just going to do a really simple little H, uh, JavaScript alert. So we'll say echo script alert. Hello there. And that should be good. Let's go ahead and update that and go take a look. There you go. Our little JavaScript code just ran because we told it to run whenever this hook is enacted and this hook is enacted if you remember in our header.php file so that was a very simple example of how you can use um, different hooks that are already there in the code that developers left for us to to play around with of course there are more um you know there are more advanced examples of things you can do especially when it comes to filter hooks um, action hooks tend to be a little easier to implement implement than filter hooks uh, but if you'd like some more information about this stuff I highly recommend checking out our knowledge base article, which has a few really helpful links that I'm going to pull up here and show you. So if we search for how to customize, you'll see this knowledge base article right here, which basically goes over a lot of the things we're talking about in this video. 
And if you go down to the hook section, you'll see three different resources. One is for, for our particular plugins, um, a lot of information in there for developers. And then there's um, information straight from WordPress about what hooks are. And then there's a very helpful blog article from Kinsta that basically walks you through how to use um, these different hooks, action hooks and filter hooks. So um, definitely check that out if you want some more information about that. I'm not going to go any further than that in this video. I don't want to lose too many people. And we have one more thing that I want to talk about with regards to customizing your calendar, which um, like the hooks also will require some coding knowledge. And that uh, that thing is called template overrides. Now, again, I'm not going to go super deep into that because we actually have another video that's all about template overrides. And there will be a link to that um, in the description of this video, but I did want to touch on it. Um, if we go back to our knowledge base and do a search for how to customize again, you'll see this how to customize template files article right here. So basically what we've done, if you're familiar at all with child themes, a child theme is basically where you create a couple files that create a theme, and then you can put files in there to override some of your theme files. So for instance, we were just looking at the header.php file. If I create a child theme and then I create a header.php file and I modify that header.php file, WordPress will use my modified version instead of the core header.php file in the parent theme, okay? And so the purpose of doing that is so you can make changes to your theme that won't go away when your theme updates. If you just go in and edit the header.php file, that we were just looking at, it would work, but next time your theme updates, you would lose those changes. So um, you create a child theme to prevent that from happening. And our template override system that we've set up is very similar to that. What, what you can do is you can create basically a copy of some of, our, some of our core files, and you can modify those copies. And WordPress will actually use those modified copies instead of the original file. That way you can make all your changes in the copy. And when we update our plugin, you won't lose those changes because they'll be in the template override rather than in the actual core file. So um, we're gonna take a look at that. And when you're using our template override method, we do recommend that you use a child theme. The reason for that is our template override system um, resides within a folder in your theme, okay? And so if you're not using a child theme, then once again, when your theme updates, you would lose that folder with all of your custom template overrides in it. So definitely want to create a child theme before you start playing around with our template overrides. That way you don't lose the changes that you made. So basically the way it works is you find a file in our core plugin that you want to edit. And then you make a copy of that file. And if you look at the top of the file, it will actually tell you where to put the copy. Um, so that's very handy. Just scroll to the top and it'll say, hey, if you want to override this template, make a copy and put it here. Most of it is going to be in a folder in your theme directory, either called tribe or tribe events. So let's take a look at an example. Much like our theme editor, we also have an option in WordPress to edit our plugin files. So I'm going to come over here and select the events calendar. And I'm going to go find a file. Let's say we just want to edit this list.php file. We scroll to the very top and we'll see right here, override this template in your own theme by creating a file at your theme. So this means in your themes root directory, your child themes root directory, remember, and then create a folder in there called tribe, put a folder inside that folder called events, put a folder inside that folder called v2, and then inside that folder, you can put your list.php. And typically what people do is they'll just copy this whole file, paste it into their, their new copy, and then start modifying things from there. And what happens is um, WordPress will actually look in this folder first to see if there's any files in there. And if they find files in there, it will use those. So if you make this copy of this file, it will use your copy of list.php. It will not use this original copy of list.php. And then of course, anything that is not in this folder, it will just default to the core plugin file. So um, again, just a really handy way to, um, you know, maybe you just really want to customize one particular part of the plugin. 
sure, you could come in here and edit this file and everything would work, but the next time we update our plugin, you'll lose all your changes. So uh, you can prevent that by following this template override system and putting a copy where it tells you to. Um, again, we have a video that goes into um, more details. Uh, you can actually find that in our How to Customize Template Files knowledge base article. The video is right there. Um, highly recommend checking that out. If you're pretty familiar with code and you really want to open up your options for customizing um, our plugins, definitely check out that video. All right, guys, that's it for this video. Hopefully between the code and no code options for customizing your calendar, you found something that was useful and helps to make your calendar just fit in a little bit better with your website. Uh, thanks guys for watching and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.